play intro music for Galen Unold. Galen Unold is on the phone from Life South Community Blood Center. He's going to tell us what we need to know if we are interested in donating blood. And uh, I invite you to call in while Galen is on. I, I do have a topic, and today it is about the Kentucky Derby. But I just wanted to say this. I haven't said this in a while. That while Galen is on every morning, uh, for those of you who have questions about donating blood, please know you are. it is okay for you to call in to interrupt whatever it is we're talking about. Because trust me, it's not as important as the thing Galen really comes on to do, which is to get you to donate blood, to convince you to. And it's either to uh, remind people like Robin and myself to do this or to perhaps um, come, put you at ease in, in, if you're not so sure about the whole process. So um, Galen is here right now on the phone. Anyway, he's the, the number here is 622-9622, and you can call in at any time. Just thought I'd say that at the, at the opening. Hey, Galen, how you doing? Hey, good morning, Larry Robin. How are y'all? Good, good. I mean, the truth is we have hey. fun, right? But but I want people to know Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, by the way, you know, your intro music, music reminded me of something. What is that? Art Bell died. Yes, Art Bell did die. <laughs> <laughs> it does and, sound and you, you, Art Bellish, doesn't we have it? Talked about, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've talked about him very uh, a few times on this station and on this radio uh, segment and you know he was a radio icon yes. uh, you know I yeah. mean at one point he was the most syndicated uh, radio host on planet earth heard by more on more stations than any other station ever so yeah I mean you know Art Bell I mean he created something out of absolutely nothing Right, right, right. I, you know, he see, he kind of set us up for a, 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 a let's see a, a template for success if you want to do overnight okay. radio. Mm-hmm. Because if you're sure. gonna if you're gonna talk about UFOs and ghosts and the paranormal in the middle of the night, you you're gonna get a listenership. People love that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I I used to listen to him on the way into to do my radio show in in Jacksonville, and um, and he would come on before us on our sister station and i'm like it's just it's the absolute best i think half of it was was staged but uh i'll never forget the guys they would call up they were like i'm gonna make it a run in area 51 right right i remember and that art, one i do and, remember that one. and yeah. art would just and art would just let him go and it would be like three hours <laughs> and, you know it was like uh the opening of Capone's safe, you know, you're like, oh my god <laughs> and I, I remember i got to the station i'm like well i can't leave he could find something. And That's I mean, right. it was, and, and this is 4.30 in the morning, and you're like, this is incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Yeah. The, the so. thought that it was staged, though, kind of ruins the whole thing, doesn't it? I, 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 no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have to suspend belief. Exactly. You, you know what I mean? Exactly, it's yeah. like watching a movie. But it, <laughs> again, I, I, I meant to mention that on Monday, and uh, Art, Art Bell passed, and um, he, he was a radio icon. So, yeah. Uh, Loved Art Bell. And George Norrie took his spot, for those who don't know what we're talking about. What was his show called? Coast to Coast or something? Yes. Coast to Coast. Coast to Coast. There you go. And I loved his intro. He goes, West of the Rockies, please use. Like, they had two right. different numbers. Right, right. You know where you're at. I'm like, what the heck? And he would get calls from all over the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, you know? It was a great show. So, Didn't we interview? Let's Arbel? go to Brazil. Uh, I don't yeah. think we ever interviewed our bell. No, I don't remember that. I, I I never did, but he, he would he would go. Let's go to Brazil, and the guy would go. Ah, uh, there are weird lights. Um, I don't do a Brazilian accent. But <laughs> there are weird lights uh-huh. all over. I uh, does anybody know what they are? And then Tucson, Arizona. I saw those same lights, Art. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, like, it was so good. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was a big fan of that show. It's hard for me. I, oh. George Norris still does it, but it's hard for me to listen nowadays. He's not. He's not Art Bell. No, I he's mean, not. Listen, Abs- I mean, no, you're right. He's there's not. one Art Bell. And, and the difference is, is Art, Art you like, okay, does he, he, you always question, does he believe this? Or is he just right, right, it? Right, right, right. But I he, know. But, but he respected them enough. That, you, you know what I mean? You, you weren't sure if he was in on the joke. Or if he was a part of the joke, or if he was the joke. Um, mm-hmm. But with with Nori, it's just not the same. I mean, you know, Art Bell was a once in a hundred year broadcaster. No, so. he was a good. Yeah, and you're right. You're right. No offense to George Nori, but it's not the same 
the, the same reason we listen to Art Bell is not why you would listen to George Norrie, if that Correct. makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I think George Norrie takes it too seriously. It, uh, but I, I don't know. I haven't heard George Norrie in a while. Yeah, me either. I, I just don't stay up anymore that late. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't Art Bell go to, was he the one that went to Hawaii and got married? He got some kind of a really pretty girl that yeah. just didn't seem to fit, but that's the way women are. They'll yeah. marry somebody like that. And he went to Hawaii you know and got married. That made? What's that? If I remember. He oh. made a ton of money. Oh, that's the reason. He, he made money on books. and Remember he had his own line, he only had his own records with his like new age spiritual <laughs> music? I did not know that. And he would say, yeah, I mean, you got to remember, I listened to him every day for like five years. And so he would say... I've got a new record coming out. And I have to tell you, I'm, I, I was truly inspired. I don't remember. That. I, I, I I created this music. It, it, I don't know if I created it or if it came through me. You know, it was that kind of stuff. And, <laughs> yeah, so. I was in. I found my safe self. I, I know I was in my own bedroom, but I but I found myself in a cave in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was it was like, and it was all this. You know, synthesizer stuff, and I'm like, that's not really music, but people bought it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Matt. Art Bell. I just want to let you know, Matt Wilkerson texted because I got a cool phone, you know, from Matt. So I, I actually get these things now. <laughs> donate. I love Matt Wilkerson. Donate blood yeah. while you're healthy, because one day it might be your turn to receive. Pay it forward. Awesome. There you go. Boy, that awesome. gave me chills. And, and, right there. And, and Matt, Matt reminded me of something. So. Um, I could tell you preliminarily, uh, WOCA, we're going to follow the Vanguard Knights this year and their football team. So oh. I'm hoping Matt's on board for that. And uh, we're going to have another great year of uh, broadcasting high school football. That is, a, I mean, that nice. really is a highlight of the, the broadcast year. I wish that was longer. I, 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 even though I'm not a football fan, I'm a, I'm a supporter of good things for the community. And, mm-hmm. and what you sure. bring to the airwaves by doing that is a good thing for the community and and it's awesome i just wish it was longer of course you probably well we'll go as yeah we'll go as long as they go so if they make it to the state championship we'll be there right there with them and uh we'll see what coach uh farmer and the uh vanguard knights can do this year so you'll start in august toward the end of august is that yeah we're we're, Mm -hmm. our, our plan is to broadcast every game except for the one i'm at dragon con unless we can get somebody else to do it but um Mm -hmm. we'll broadcast uh Every game, whether it's on the road or right there, Booster Stadium. Oh, nice! So. Excellent, excellent. Galen, do you this is exciting. do you have a? Can, do you remember the first time you ever donated blood? Yes. Where? Yeah. What was the story? What happened? Were you scared before it? So, uh, no, well, no, I was in the Navy, and oh. so basically, this is what they said. They they came over the one MC, which is the PA system, and they said, everybody. Who with a who uh, has a it was a certain number. Mine's a three on your social security number. Please report to the mess decks. I'm like okay, so I report to the mess decks, uh-huh. and then they're like, "You're donating blood today." It was not a <laughs> it was not a request. It was an order. Oh man! So because you 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 do know that when you're in the military, you don't own your own body. That's right. That's the right. military <laughs> owns your body. That's a fact. I mean, yeah. That's a fact. So if you're a cheerleader, you give up all your rights. If you're a cheerleader, are you under the same kind of pressure? Like all, all of you will take your tops is, off today. <laughs> that is just that is just creepy. You read the article? <laughs> I did. Yeah. 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 We're, we're okay. So the Washington Redskins. Uh, let me give it this synopsis. So the, the Washington Redskins, for their high level sponsors, invited them to come to this photo shoot of the cheerleaders, mm-hmm. in which some of them were renewed or had like body paint. And and there were just a bunch of old men ogling over them during this photo shoot. Right. That is like the ultimate creepy. Yes. Forced. First of all, and, by the way. Yeah, and I don't know. They if had their worked, passports the taken I, away from them. They couldn't even go back right, home if they wanted to. Right. 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 I and, and here's and there's like multiple levels of creepiness. One, if if you're a sponsor and you take part in that, that's very creepy. Right. Yeah. If you're the Washington Redskins and you take part in that, it's very, very creepy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. this is, and there's a bunch of adults who, all, all one of them had to say, he goes, "What are we doing here? I thought we were just going, and and right. uh, you're giving me a trip to Costa Rica, wherever they were. I don't remember." 
And, um, and, and it turns out to be this crip. I, I, honestly, Larry, I know we joke a lot, but I couldn't. I couldn't do that. No, I couldn't, I couldn't either. No, I, I've never been able to relate to the people who somehow are turned on by hurting other people. I just can't. I can't relate yeah. to that at all. I mean, hurting, yeah. and, and hurting somebody emotionally is just is, is on the same plane. Yeah. Whatever. It's just, it's similar as physical. I'm with you. Weird. It, P- plus, they were forced. Of- the girls were also forced, by the way, to be the escorts of some of the players. To an event, yeah. they, they were just, described yeah. as arm candy. Right, mm-hmm. you will be arm well, candy. And, and, and uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I know they don't make any money. I get that. You know that it's a it's a volunteer job. But oh, I, I and, and it just reminds me of, of one more reason why I don't want a daughter. <laughs> I would. I, would <laughs> I, I mean, I would lose my mind. So, yeah, and, and if my, I, honestly, though, if my son were to partake in something like that, I would lose my mind. You know, I raised you better than that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what right. I tell. There you go. Hey, we have a phone call. Let's take that call. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, I remember the first time that I uh, donated blood. I was in college, and um, the uh, local hospital um, uh, needed a, had a blood emergency for whatever reason. And they organized a blood drive on campus, and uh, uh, a bunch of us college students rolled up our sleeves, and uh, that was my first time. Yeah. I was 18. Good for you. Were you nervous? Were you scared? Wow. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, good for you. That's yeah. excellent. Good for you. Yeah. Well, good Thank you, Jim. I think Jim was Fine. on the bus with us one time, right? I think so, I think yeah. He, yeah, I think the Life South was out there in the, here at the mall. I think Jim came on the same time we did. So. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And that, 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 that takes courage to go and do that, no matter how old you are, when it's your first time, even, you know, your 50th time. So I was scared. Uh, not scared, scared, but you know what I mean, a little bit apprehensive. After the first time, the first time I was scared. That the, that word applies the first time, but the second time, third time, few first times I was still apprehensive. Mm-hmm. You know. But the phlebotomists are amazing. They're phenomenal because they have to get that vein on the first try, and you know they have to. Yeah. Do it. yeah. Well, just just like you might confuse exorcism with circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> don't confuse phlebotomist with lobotomist. Just so oh, you know. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> you don't see a lobotomist on the uh, on the bus. <laughs> so Galen, I, I didn't, when I didn't hear that, joke. <laughs> I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> when 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 you gave in the Navy, did they adhere to the eight week rule or did they not? How did you know? Well, I, I, well, first of all, I was out at sea for uh, more than eight weeks at a time, so that wasn't really a problem. So they knew it happened. And, eight weeks, and, yeah. Yeah, and and what happened was is we were in, um, we were where were we? We were like Guam, or something like that, and so you know we were in a we were in another uh, we had to be in a U.S. territory because it was the American Red Cross, um, and I think we were in Guam, um, and so that's why that's why we donated because when we were in the Philippines, that wouldn't have been the American Red Cross. That would have gone to a different country or oh. Japan or Australia or any other Korea. And so I, I'm pretty sure it was the, uh, it was in Guam that I donated. Mm-hmm. Do you miss those days? I mean, being in the Navy? Uh, huh. No, I mean, I'm glad I got out. I mean, I, 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 I dream about the ship all the time. Really? So, oh, that's gosh, interesting. interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's interesting. There, do, do I miss it? Absolutely. But it's more of a romantic missing. I don't miss, a lifestyle. I, I miss the my shipmates and waking up on the ocean and that smell and uh, the night before. Anybody who's been in the Navy, the best the best time on a U.S. naval ship is the night before you pull into a port. It's the it's the absolute best because you get that anticipation. You're going to a new country. You know you're going to go get drunk. Um, <laughs> these are right. the things that are very important. Right, right, right. So, did you yeah. did, wow. did you happen to hear the story we had in the news about the Navy veteran, 80 years old, now works as a crossing guard at a school somewhere, and some 36-year-old uh-huh. idiot punches him in the face and then runs away. So the, the old man falls down, gets up, and continues doing his job. And meanwhile, you know, of course, the other parents was like, oh, my gosh, are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. The guy, the guy was in the Navy. He, was a, he steered a battleship in war through, through combat, so... I thought yeah. that was pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, gosh. He's got four. Absolutely. Do you call it steering? 
Or is there another word? Navigating? What do you call it? When, uh, when you steer the ship. Well, <laughs> you're the helmsman. The helmsman. Uh, I would, technically, you are steering the ship. See, that would what work you're for me. Doing, what, you're, what you're doing is, and, and I've been a helmsman. I'm, I'm qualified or whatever that is. And uh, it's the simplest job of all time. You do exactly what the person is in charge is. You do you exactly what they say to do when they tell you to do it. Nice. That's we, it. We have an author coming There's on. There's no uh, thinking. The book There's we, no thinking. Uh, the book we have later on, Into the Raging Sea, The Sinking of the El Faro. That ought to be a good one. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so I, I, I have some uh, Kentucky Derby stuff I want to share with you. Do you, um, l let me find out how the blood supply is right now. Yeah, we're right there at a five-day blood supply. And, um, again, if you haven't donated, donate and then come on the show and share with your first-time story. That is a cool idea. How about that? Yeah, first-time stories, yeah. Very cool idea. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, about donating blood, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. My mind went Darn. elsewhere. I know. I don't want to hear the Amtrak station. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Did you know that the Kentucky Derby has a connection to the Lewis and Clark expedition? What? Really? Yeah. Okay. In 1872, Meriwether Lewis Clark Jr., the grandson of the Clark from Lewis and Clark, went to the Epson Derby in England. When he got back to the United States, he started a racing club called the Louisville Jockey Club and raised enough money to build a permanent racetrack in Louisville. Voila. Nice. There it is. Okay. Uh, I didn't know that. Did you know that the Kentucky Derby is the longest-running sporting event in the United States? I did know that, yes. Uh, Continuously running, yes. 1875, a crowd of 10,000 people watched the first one. 10,000 people. Gosh. Pretty good, yeah. right? Yeah, Pretty I, would good. Think, I would think so. Um, let's see. Uh, the three-year-old chestnut thoroughbred Aristides. Aristides? Was the first Derby winner uh, in just over two minutes and thirty-seven seconds. His jockey Oliver Lewis was nineteen years old and never raced in the Derby again. Aristides. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. By the way, Aristides' trainer was a former slave. Oh my! Good. Eighteen seventy-two. Wow. Wow. Uh, the racetrack did not always have a name. Churchill Downs. Uh, was mm -hmm. was not named until 1883. They didn't call it anything. Okay. They just went down. It was <laughs> go to the racetrack, right? Yeah. Well, just like here with uh, um, Don Garlitz and all those guys racing up and down Daytona Beach before they had a racetrack. That's there true. Too. You know, yeah. you just find a spot. And they called it, it the beach, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it always had a name, and that was not good. Don Garlitz was a drag car guy. He wasn't a NASCAR. Guy. Oh, that's right. Roses. He, he doesn't know how to turn. <laughs> That's right. Roses first appeared at the Derby in 1896 when the winner, Ben Brush, was given a garland made out of white and pink roses. In 1904, the red rose became the official flower of the Derby because, uh, let's see, there was a meaning behind the color red. Uh, Run for the Roses was, uh, the, the phrase Run for the Roses was coined by a newspaper columnist, a, a sports columnist, Bill Corum, Bill Corum. Oh, in 1904. So that's when it was run. Oh, the Bill. Races. Yeah, we all know who Bill is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. He's a sports columnist, and he named the Kentucky Derby. The, Gave it a moniker. The Rose Garland today, in this day and age, 400 red roses are sewn onto green satin weighing more than 40 pounds. Wow. Did you know that? And they just pile it on that poor horse. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> the Kentucky Derby Trophy is made of 14 karat gold and stands on a jade base. It's 22 inches tall and weighs three and a half pounds. Oh my! Wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah. It doesn't uh, travel though, right? They they all have a, their own trophy once once they win it. I think so. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky Derby is always on the first Saturday in May every year. It's been that way since 1946. Yes. Yes. Uh, the day before the Derby, that would be today, there's another race called the Kentucky Oaks. Not as famous. Yes. Oh. Right. That's today. Okay. Uh, only three Phillies have won the Kentucky Derby. Is this true or is this an old list here? I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Uh, I don't know. 
I'm not up to speed on my horse racing. The smallest race was in 1892. Only three horses competed. Whoa, you could win that one. <laughs> well, I guarantee you, I'd be in the money. <laughs> you do a yeah, I'd be in the money. <laughs> Uh, the fastest winner was Secretariat. Doesn't he have an Ocala connection, Secretariat? I think so. No. One minute, 59.4 no. seconds. One minute, 59.4. No, he does not. 1973. I, I, I don't think he spent any time at Ocala. Mm. Okay. Has the track changed at all since it's, in, I mean, the length nope. of the derby? Nope. 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 Oh, Okay. Uh, mint julep is the drink of choice. More, more than 120,000 mint juleps will be served tomorrow. Just They're at, beautiful. <laughs> just Great at drink. Churchill Downs. I'm going to have to learn how to make that. We should have that tomorrow. Not very hard. A little bourbon, a little mint, a little life. That's pretty about it. Oh, that's it? Oh. Pretty much. Okay. Hmm. Since alcohol makes you hungry, uh, 5.5 tons of food is sold <laughs> at, at Churchill Downs. 5.5 tons of food. Okay. Uh, the Derby is known for fashion as much as it is for horses. Um, among the famous things that are worn are hats and flowing dresses, Galen. Mm -hmm. Flowing dresses and hats. Don't the guys wear something say, why, special, Why do you though? emphasize that? The tails I don't know. Oh, everything. yeah, they... They, yeah, it's a it's a it's a formal affair. They wear jackets and, and the top hats you know. too, right? They wear those. Uh, I don't know about a top hat. Uh -huh. Not, there aren't very many people on this planet who can pull off a top hat. Yeah, we should have one of those. Um, almost two hundred million dollars are bet uh, on and off the track during the Kentucky Derby. Two hundred million dollars. Awesome. Wow. Good. Two dollars of that is mine. <laughs> I'm gonna go bet tomorrow. What time does it open? Gonna go bet. Place. Gonna go OBS. OBS. Yeah. Go to OBS. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go bet two bucks. Uh. Yes. I, so do they have that? I, I. I. I don't know what we're doing here on the radio, but I think they have it over at OBS, right? You can watch it from if you. Yeah. Say you can it. watch it from. Sure. There. It's a sad. Absolutely. It's a sad thing to watch people watch a race yeah. in, in there. <laughs> It's more exciting, I think, at the actual place. I'm going with my mom and her girlfriends. We're going to the Elks tomorrow. Oh, that's right. You guys. And are, watch it at yeah. the Elks. That'll be fun. Why, why, why is it sad? It just is. I, I watch people. They don't look happy. Oh, because they lose. I mean, it's like watching people at, at, at slot machines. They don't look happy. Mm -hmm. It's like watching men at the strip club. They don't look happy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just, know what you're talking about. They just don't look happy. They just look like they're sad. They're and, mesmerized. I'm so sad. That could have been... <laughs> when I was younger, I could have... Uh, Gail, Gail, where's the uh, Bloodmobile today? Hey, Bloodmobile today. We're out at the uh, Dunellen Walmart. And uh, this weekend, we got Founders Day out of Bellevue. So come by. Check out Founders. If you've never been there, it's it's a, an event uniquely Bellevue in. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Bellevue Ian. We've been there. It's wonderful. Bellevue Founders Day. Enjoy your weekend, Galen. Thank you for what you do. And thank you, Palm Garden and Penn Flooring. I'll make it up to you. I know I didn't mention it earlier. We'll be right back. This is The Source. Bye, y'all. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu, an ATF agent fighting to survive in critical condition after being shot overnight on Chicago's south side. Officers reportedly requested that a trauma team be ready to treat that injured officer. The call clearly coming in that the ATF agent had been shot in the head. Joni Lum with Fox TV affiliate WFLD. Another officer also hurt, but less seriously. Two days of trade talks with Beijing wrapped up the U.S. delegation now heading home this after presenting some demands, including China to reduce its trade imbalance immediately to cut that trade surplus with the U.S. again by $200 billion by the year 2020 and also China to stop subsidies for advanced technologies. Connell McShane with the Fox Business Network and more than 17 tons of ground beef being recalled after possible contamination for plastic bits. Fox News, we report, you decide. My number two does not look like a number two. I don't know what to call it. Is there a number three? Table for four, please. Anything close to the restroom. Ugh, a middle seat with these stomach problems? That's my fear of flying. Sound like you? If it does, you could be one of the many people with a digestive condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. Even if you don't know what EPI is, you might know the symptoms. Frequent diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain. 
If you have even just one of these symptoms, you could still have EPI because not everybody experiences EPI the same way, which is why it's so important to open up to your doctor about all your symptoms. And the good news is EPI is manageable, so don't keep a lid on it. Go to identifyepi.com, complete the symptom checker, and use it to have a conversation with your doctor. Don't keep a lid on it. Visit identifyepi.com. Brought to you by AbbVie. April showers bring May flowers, but May is easily the most special month for Palm Garden of Oklahoma.